Apple's latest iPhone update is here, and it's brimming with features that anyone can appreciate. You don't need to be a tech wizard to get excited about it. Let's dive into an awesome feature in iOS 17, AirTag sharing. It's like handing someone a digital key to your physical keys. And with the holidays coming up, this is a great stocking stuffer. Here's how it works. We'll open the Find My app on the phone, and I'll tap items at the bottom. Then I'll tap David's keys, just my keys. Then we'll scroll down a little bit to share this AirTag. And it's as easy as tapping add person. How is AirTag sharing useful? Well, maybe you're on a family road trip. You share an AirTag you place in the car. If someone needs to know where the car is parked or if it's moved, they can check their phone. Cool. Ever since iOS 17, there has been a new default notification sound and it stinks. It sounds like you accidentally butt dialed someone and then hung up on them. Starting in iOS 17.2, you can change this finally. I'll open the settings app and tap here on sounds and haptics. Scroll down and you'll see this brand new default alerts section. Tap on that. Now you can change it to whatever you want in this section. Unfortunately, these still aren't customizable like ringtones are, but at least this is a step up from what we originally had, which was nothing. Next up, a prediction I have about a setting you don't like, inline predictions. The helpful new feature that makes you feel like your iPhone is trying to read your mind and finish your sentences, but instead it's just putting the mess back in your messages. Let's open the settings app, we're already there. Tap back and then tap back to settings again. Then we're gonna to go to general here, tap on that. Then we're gonna scroll down to keyboard and tap on that. And in this keyboard section of settings, we'll tap the switch next to show predictions in line to turn it off. Turning this off is like shutting down your over eager friend who always thinks they know what you're about to say, so they interrupt you. No more I'm on my way to the store turning into I'm on my way to the moon. Speaking of messages, let's delve into what our more privacy conscious fans are saying is the best new iOS 17 feature, iMessage contact key verification. Here's how to turn on contact key verification. I'll open the settings app on this phone, and tap on your name at the top of the screen, then scroll down all the way to the bottom here and you'll see contact key verification. Before we turn it on, you need to know that every Apple product you own has to have iMessage that's capable of running iMessage contact key verification for this to work. Tap on that and then turn on verification in iMessage. You'll get some information here and then I can tap continue. This feature is like a secret handshake for your messages. What does it do? Well. Think of iMessage key verification like sending a letter in the mail in a special magical envelope. When you write a message, it goes into this envelope which can only be opened by the person you're sending it to. This is because only you and your friend have the magic wands, which are the keys, that can open these envelopes. Now, what if a wizard hacker tries to create a fake wand to open your messages? If it spots a fake wand, it tells you, which ensures that only the other magicians or your friends with the right magic or key can read your messages. This way your secret conversation stays safe and private. And I can also show my public verification code. And I can put this online. I can even put it in my Twitter profile. This isn't a password or anything private because the keys are hidden. Now let's say you're in the messages app and you want to use this. Well, you have to tap on the contact at the top here and then scroll down to the bottom and you'll see advanced message security, which is new, David Payette, verification off. To use contact key verification, ask them to turn it on in settings. So for those of you precocious people who like to be privy to the latest privacy precautions, iMessage contact key verification in iOS 17 is a great feature you don't want to overlook. Next up, we're gonna talk about battery in about. Let's open settings. Tap back to settings. I'm gonna tap at the top here, just to go all the way to the top, and then tap on general. And then I'm going to tap on about, then I'm going to scroll to the bottom, and if you do not have an iPhone 15, you will not see this section. Why? Well, because Apple chose not to put it on your phone. There's literally no reason why it shouldn't be there. But just saying, battery manufacture date, first use, cycle count. 
Things like first use, when your phone was assembled, and number of charge cycles are here. If you think you have a problem with your battery, you can cross-check this number with your battery health percentage to see if it's time for a replacement. Next up, name drop. Picture this, you're at a networking event and instead of fumbling around with business cards or handing someone else your phone, you just hold your iPhone near the top of someone else's. Presto, your contact info is shared. Sounds convenient, right? But I'm not done yet. In fact, a lot of people and the police say you should turn it off. But is that true? Or is it a bunch of bologna? Here's why you might consider turning it off. Sure, sharing contact info is easier than ever, but do you really want to accidentally beam your details to someone nearby? It's like accidentally casting a spell in the world of wizards. Oops, wrong person. But you do have control over your information. When you use NameDrop, a glow emerges from the top of both devices and you're given the option to receive only or share. But in the heat of the moment, you might accidentally share more than you intended. As we said, police are recommending you turn off NameDrop. But why shouldn't you turn it off? Well, in my opinion, it's awesome. And it's not like it happens totally automatically. You do have to confirm it. It reminded Zek and me of when Apple Pay came out. It was the same kind of mass hysteria. People were gonna be walking around with NFC little gadgets and stealing your money because now I can wirelessly Apple Pay. But that didn't happen. One thing I don't love about NameDrop is that it's only for new contacts. You can't use it at this point to update your friend's contact if they move, for instance, which would be useful. Let's take a journey now to the new journal app. I'll tap to open it up. Do you want to allow journal to use face ID? Yes. Welcome to journal. Continue. It's easy to create blank journal entries, which it should be. But if I tap plus here at the bottom of the screen and scroll down here, I can see, think about a recent topic you were curious about. What sparked your curiosity? Who's the wisest person in your family? What have you learned from them recently? Well, obviously me. And what have I learned from myself recently? That I'm the wisest person. I'm gonna be making my own entries because I instantly start picking apart their stupid suggested journal entries. But maybe you like the prompts, do you? Let us know in the comment section below. Couple quick thoughts before we move on. If we go to settings and then back to general, back to settings and scroll down to journal, tap on that. Tap here on lock journal. You have to enter your iPhone passcode, which I'll do, and then turn on lock here. And you could require a passcode after one minute or immediately or five or 15 minutes. If you're writing stuff that you don't want your nosy friends to read, it's a good idea to lock up your journal and enjoy a little bit more peace of mind. One more cool setting, if you're bad at remembering things like I am sometimes, go back to journal and tap on journaling schedule and turn on schedule. And you could be reminded to journal at a specific time every day or whichever days you want to. You put a lot of effort into journaling every day. We put a lot of effort into making these videos. So hit that like button and subscribe to, uh, show some appreciation for us. Next up, we're gonna talk about one of our favorite topics here at Paid Forward, your laundry. Have you ever looked at a clothing tag and seen these little symbols? I had never noticed them before, but you can see that there's these little symbols that actually mean things. And how do you find out what they mean? Well, look no further than the Photos app. When you take a photo of the laundry tag, you can go into the Photos app and use Visual Lookup to see what each of these symbols mean. What a cool life hack. I'll tap into the photo here. And, and at the bottom of the screen, look real quick, there's this laundry icon. I'll tap on that. And then tap look up laundry care. Do not dry clean. Washing, maximum 40 degrees Celsius. Bleaching with non-chlorine agents. Tumble drying. Ironing, maximum 110 degrees Celsius. No more excuses if you shrink that cashmere sweater, my friend. That was a lot of information pretty fast. If you want a write-up of every single setting we're talking about in this video and others, please consider joining our channel. It's super easy. Just hit the join button down below and get access to those free PDFs. Next, we'll talk about some crop I really like. Do you like a certain part of a photo you took and want to crop it out quick? Well, now you don't even need to go into the edit section in the Photos app. Let's head to the Photos app on the phone here. And let's see here. I'll tap here on this picture of my brand new Steinway A. 
And you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, real quick, tap that crop button. That brings you right to the correct part of the edit section. And you can even tap this auto button at the top and it'll automatically crop your photo. Now, it could be terrible, like it just did with this. Apparently it thinks that my Steinway should be falling off. It's like, like a ship, like it's just falling off the side of a ship. So I'll tap done and use this incredible machine learning and artificial intelligence that's built into the phone. And I mean, that's, boy, that's much better. Let's give some attention to a groundbreaking feature for iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max users. The ability to record videos directly to an external USB drive. Let's look at the difference. This creates a much more seamless workflow for you content creators out there like us. It streamlines the workflow, which allows you to transfer the files really, really fast, which you can really never do before with an iPhone. What do you need for this to work? Let's start with the surprise external hard drive. We'll get to the accoutrements in a second. Apple has a lot of tech jargon on their website about what you need. We'll drop some links in the description section below to external SSDs that you can use with your phone. These are the solid state drives, not the old school spinning ones because the old school ones can't save data fast enough for the video. That's how you do it. This is probably how the filmmakers at Apple shot the Scary Fast event this past October. Let's unpack a hidden gem in iOS 17, offline maps. We've all been there, right? You're on a road trip in the middle of nowhere and your GPS says, sorry, can't help. But with iOS 17, that's a thing of the past. Here's how to do it. I'll show you my favorite way. Swipe back to the home screen and open the Maps app. Now I'm going to search Maps for a place I'm visiting on vacation. Let's check out Lake Placid. All I need to do is hit this new download button and I can pinch to zoom in or out to either get more of the area or less of the area. So if I know I'm gonna to go to Saranac Lake, maybe I'll get all the offline maps for this giant area. And as we change the area, we see the size of the map changing below. Obviously, the bigger the area, the bigger the download. Then tap download and that's it. It'll just work. At first I thought, this isn't really that cool of a feature, but it is. So when you hit dead zones, your map doesn't go blank. That's great. It's like having a trusty old paper map, but it's smarter and you don't have your dad giving you dirty looks in the back seat for not folding it back together perfectly. Speaking of driving around, let's talk about a feature that's changing the game for drivers. Imagine this, you're cruising down the highway and you get a text message with an image. Now we all know that looking at your phone while driving is a no-go. Enter Siri, your trusty CarPlay co-pilot. Siri and CarPlay isn't just about reading text messages anymore. It's about keeping you informed safely. Here's how it works. You receive an image and a message. Instead of tempting you to peek, Siri chimes in. Siri gives you a verbal description of the image. It's like having a narrator in your car telling you a story based on the picture. This is a big win for road safety. You keep your eyes on the road, your hands on the wheel, and still get the gist of the image. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any cool tricks you'd like to share with us, drop them in the comments section below and watch this video next. And lastly, annoying your employers. Maybe you like leaving your backpack at work <laughs> and the stupid thing goes off every half hour. It's not mine. Here's why you might consider turning. <laughs> Go leave that in. Yeah.